Hey guys, welcome to the next video and another question. Um, it's a nice and analytical question for you today. The equation 3x squared minus 12x plus 11 plus 1 upon 5 times x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 is equal to 0. This equation has exactly one root in the interval 1, 2, exactly two roots, exactly three roots or no roots at all. So which would be the correct answer? You must actually pause and try to figure out yourself. What we have in front of us is a polynomial. Now, the best thing that I can do here to analyze this equation is to look at this function. One by time, one by five times x cube x cube minus 6x square plus 11x minus 6, okay? So this is, let, let's take this as our function. Let's differentiate it. I'll get 6x minus 12 plus 1 by 5 times 3x square minus 12x plus 11, right? This is what we will get. Now, um, let's just simplify this expression. And on simplifying, I'm going to keep 1 by 5 outside. So if I take 1 by 5 outside, as in I'm taking it common, then this becomes 30x minus this becomes 60. I'm multiplying, dividing by uh, 5. So I'm going to get here 3x square minus 12x plus 11. So that means what I have here is 1 by 5. If I keep just 1 by 5 outside, I have 3x square. I have 30 minus 12 gives you 18, 18x. And minus 60 plus 11 gives you minus 49, okay? So this is what your f dash x is. Now, is f dash x greater than 0 or less than 0? Can we figure that out? Well, uh, in a, a, and the um, interval of interest is 1 to 2. Okay, that, let's call this expression that we have figured out here gx. Now, why I'm doing that, I'll tell you. Now, gx is 3x square plus 18x minus 49. Not a very easy uh, expression to probably uh, make factors of. So, let's analyze this. gx is giving you, if you take g dash x, you will get 6x plus 18, which in the concerned interval 1 to 2, is always greater than zero, right? So that means gx is increasing. gx is increasing in one, two, two. So whatever values you will be getting, you will be getting increasing values. Now, if you look at this gx at one, at one, you will get three plus 18 minus 49 which is a negative value, which is, of course, is a negative value, okay? And uh, G2, if you look at G2, G2 is also, let's look at it, G2 will give you 3 into 4 plus 18 into 2 minus 49. So that will be 12 plus 36 minus 49. So that's again negative minus 1. This is also negative. This is also negative. Okay. So the expressions that and you will be get, you're getting increasing values only. So all the expressions that you will get in between will also be negative because the maximum that you are getting is minus 1. So that means everything that you will be getting in uh, from 1 to 2, this expression will always give you a negative value. That's the reason why I took it as a separate, uh, you know, function and worked it out. So, which implies 
which implies overall if I look at f dash x, f dash x is less than 0 because that expression I took as g, uh, that is always giving negative values. So f dash x is always uh, is, is uh, less than 0. That means f is decreasing. So if it's a decreasing function, if, if it's a strictly decreasing, actually, if you observe here, you will be getting strictly increasing. And hence, because of that, you will be getting strictly decreasing here. If you have a strictly decreasing function, there could be two scenarios. Either it will never cut the x-axis. That is, cutting the x-axis means the functional value being zero. Or maybe it cuts the x-axis at most once. Okay, maybe it doesn't cut the x-axis at all. Maybe it cuts it at most once. So what should be our answer? We are still not at the answer. We must figure out what is f of 1 and f of 2 to get the clarity of the number of roots that we can get here. Now, f of 1 would simply be, I'm going to make use of this space. f of 1 would simply be, 3 minus 12 plus 11 plus 1 upon 5, 1 minus 6 plus 11 minus 6, right? And this will turn out to be 2. Let's see what f of 2 turns out to be. So f of 2 will be 3 into 2 square minus 12 into 2 plus 11 plus 1 by 5 times 2 cube minus 6 into 2 square plus 11 into 2 minus 6. Let's see what it turns out to be. After simplifying, calculating, you will get minus 1. So f of 1 is 2 and f of 2 is minus 1. If that's happening, f of 1 is 2 uh, and f of 2 is minus 1. That means the function is turning negative from positive. So it's falling like this, that it was positive and then it is turning negative. That means it will cut the x-axis once, exactly once. It is cutting the x-axis and it is cutting the x-axis exactly once. This, what we have done right now is we're using a lot of concepts actually, using the intermediate value theorem, the logic behind all that. But I'm not naming anything uh, here because I want you to understand the logic behind it. It's not about cramming the name of any theorem or anything. It's what it means is important at your level. Okay. So I hope you've understood what we have realized in this question is that this function turns out to be a decreasing function, a strictly decreasing function. A strictly decreasing function can cut the x-axis at most once. And since the function um, is, give, is turning negative from positive, that means it is definitely cutting the x-axis and that's happening exactly once. So I hope you've uh, been able to brush up this concept with me. Thank you.